Okay, so in this problem here, we have a series of triangles, T0, 1, 2, and so on, are formed by rotating each consecutive triangle. So taking this triangle here, rotating it anti-clockwise in this direction by theta, and then enlarging it by a factor of k. Enlarge in this case actually means smaller, so enlarging by a factor will be a fraction. All right, and so that's what's happening. So given the series of transformations we try that a point is described by some matrix A times the initial point. And so we have 8, 0, and T, 0. So this point here is transformed over to there. So in doing this problem, it's really important that we actually we have to determine matrix A. In doing this, we have to think about a global perspective, like what's actually happened. This distance here, this line here, has gone to here after two transformations. One I know has been a enlargement. So it's gone from eight zero to two or to zero two. So this value eight has to have gone from eight to two within two transitions. So if it's gonna be multiplied by something and then multiplied by something again, it's gotta go by a half and then times a half from 8 to go to 2. And that's just by inspection. There's no math to do with that. So I know my enlargement matrix is actually going to be a half, 0, 0, a half. Now, the rotation part, It's if it's going to go from here to here, it means it's rotated 90 degrees in two transformations. So that means it has to go 45 degrees, and then 45 degrees. So that's what's going on. So my just by pure inspection and by analysis of the situation, I can come up with the fact that my angle is 45 degrees and that my k value is equal to 1 half. So using my formula booklet, I know that when I rotate anti-clockwise, it is cosine 45 minus sine of 45, sine of 45, excuse me, cosine of 45. And so this is what A is actually equal to. And so I know I get, I'm going to pull out one half here, so I get 1, 0, 0, 1, just for ease of calculation. And this one here is root 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2, however you see it. So let's actually do root 2 over 2 this time. And your calculator will do this, and you can do it all in a calculator. Um, because this program makes it hard to do calculators as well to show it, I'm going to sh do it this way, uh, root 2 and 2. They're all the same. And I can actually take out root 2 over 2 as a, as a factor. And so it's 1 half times root 2 over 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, and this one's negative. And so if I want to simplify my life, I have root 2 over, over 4 here. And when I multiply this, I get 1, 0, I get 1, negative 1, 1, and 1. And so here is what matrix A is equal to. And I can use that particular value there as my matrix. Um, if I really want to multiply it out, it's root 2, 4, negative root 2 over 4, root 2 over 4, and root 2 over 4. And this as a decimal, and I'm now just looking at my notes kind of thing, I know that my calculator would give me 354 negative 0 0.354 0 0.354 any of these versions is 100% correct okay and so now we want to find the coordinates of t3 well we know that if this is t0 this is t1 it gets multiplied by a if i want to go to the next one if i want t3 that means I'm going to have to do T3 is equal to A cubed times T0. And if, I, if you want me to elaborate on that, I know actually 
that t1 is equal to a times t0. If I want t2, well, that's going to be a times t1, which I know t1 is a times t0, which is a squared t0. If I want t3, I always know that it's going to be a times t2, which a t2 is a squared times t0, which is a cubed times t0. So if I want t cubed, this is the calculation I'm going to do. And so to set that up, t3 will be my matrix A times t0 are just the points in my initial triangle. So 0, 0, 8, 0, and 4, 4. And so when I go here, it's A times 0, 0, 4, 4, and 8, 0. And I can do it with, with my calculator. And if I do that, I end up getting 0, 0, negative 0 point, oh, 0 point 0.707, 0, negative 0 0.707, 0 and 0 0.707. This will be my vertices for the third triangle. Okay, moving on to B part here. When we look at x sub n, y sub n is equal to c sub n based upon the initial values of it. I had to think about this for a second and what it was talking about. I thought the question forgot something, but then I realized I've already done this question. I did it when I was talking about this scenario here. So I know, for example, that T3 is x3, y3 is equal to a cubed to x0, y0. And that's exactly what this is saying. It is saying that some point in the nth triangle is just multiplied by some matrix uh, times the initial point. So write down C1. Well, C1 is simply going to equal to A, which is I can get from here. And I, so that means that it is just going to be root 2 over 2, minus root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and root 2 over 2. And find C2, C3, C4, well, then C2 is going to be equal to A squared, C3 is A cubed, and C4 is A to the fourth. And our calculators will tell us these particular matrices here, which I'll save for you to do. But now I want to find the sum of all the areas going on to infinity. And to do this, we have to think about, actually go back again to what this problem is all about. Okay, and so this problem is, if we look at this triangle here, right, I know that there's one triangle, two triangles in this quadrant here. There's two triangles in this quadrant. And in this quadrant, there's going to be two more, and this quadrant, two more, and then it goes back into this. So in total, there's going to be eight triangles. And so I need to find the sum of them all. So if I know it's going to be T0 plus T1 plus T2 plus all the way up to T8 is what I'm looking for. If I look at T0, well, T0 is going to be half the base, which is 8, times the height, which is 4, plus t1. Well, how do I get t1? Well, the area of this one, which if I figure out this area, is going to be 16. I know to go from t0 to t1, the new, I know the formula that says the new area is equal to the determinant of the transformation matrix I'll call A times the original area. Well, the, the matrix that I use each time is 
a for a. If I want to find the determinant, I multiply those two together, which gives me 2 root 2 times root 2 over 16 minus a negative 2 over 16, which is 4 over 16, which we know is 1 quarter. And so I know that this particular term is going to be the new area will be 1 quarter times the original area, which is 16. So that is going to be 4. So this one's going to be 4. When I go to T2, well, that's going to be the new area is going to be 4, the original area of 4 times a quarter, and I get 1 plus and so on. And so in total, I know, actually I just realized I said something incorrect, this is not T7, it's actually, good, or T8, it's going to be, it's going to be T7, because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then I'm inside. But in total there's 8 terms. So I know that each time I am multiplying by a quarter, it is a geometric sum of 8 terms. My first term is 16. My uh, 1 plus my r is 1 quarter to the power of 8 over 1. Oh, it's not plus. It is minus a quarter over 1 over this. And when I do this calculation, I get 16. On the bottom is 3 quarters. And this one here, well, it's... 1 minus a quarter to the power of 8. And if I just throw this whole thing into my calculator, if I look at my notes, I get 21.3 as my total area because this is a geometric sequence. I hope that helps.